Welcome to our new Martian Dawn in Station Ears, and it's time to complete our hydroponics bay today. I think I'm up to four solar panels already, and it's still not really enough. Um, this can quickly get depleted at night time, particularly if I'm burning, um, yes, ore. <laughs> oh, one th quick thing, by the way. Don't think, hey, it's minus 60 out here. I'll store my ice in here. Then turn around and turn on your furnace and close the door and walk away. This is how you, uh, this is how you get... A rather excessive amount of, um, yes, H2O. <laughs> so I'm going to have to build an extension to that filtration system. Uh, I'll probably do that a little bit later in the episode, just to basically extend this into being something generic. So we can have an input, an output tank, and then we can just use this as a filter in the meantime. And what we can then do is uh, probably move this active vent. This actually will become useful again. Um, because we'll, we will use that as a vacuum drawer, but only on this side of the tank to clean it out after we've, uh, we, after we've filtered the stuff we want into the, the eventual tank. And what we might put here is another tank connector, so we're never really wasting anything, we're just, it's a very early way of separating gases and indeed well, liquid in this particular case. But let's get on with uh, the episode. Ooh, that's a light kit. I was just going to have a look at which... Ooh, yeah, these are the new lights. Remember, uh, if you don't know if you remember last season or not, if you didn't watch that, then fine. But we used to have these wall lights, but now there are huge ones. Unfortunately, we don't have a ceiling in there I can attach to, which is slightly annoying. Um, but I guess we could put them on the wall, uh, sort of like... Uh, I want to say... Like that. And, uh, yeah, they, they point down quite well, I think. Unless that's the wrong way around. Uh, it will rotate, so it's just locked to the wall. So yeah, that is obviously the right way around. Yeah, I like the idea. I'll put up a little locker over here just to start storing stuff uh, that we can get to. Um, what did I actually... I think I actually put some stuff in the locker. Yeah, so what we're going to have a look at today is uh, radiators and cooling systems. And if we have a look over here, I'll just pop up onto the top for a second. You'll see on the inside, and the inside's about about freezing now, ish, and it's about 25 kPa in there. It's about half what I actually want in terms of pressure. But the sun warms it up with every pass. It warms it up maybe half a degree of a room this size, so that's quite a significant amount of energy being put into it. So we need to take that energy back out. Let me just grab. Oh, these aren't actually. <laughs> Let me just remove those again. Uh, no, that's mine toolbar. Uh, do, 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 do. There we go. And let's just remove these. So yes, what we actually want to do is take energy back out. Now, I have a bit of a, an axe to grind with this whole thing. You see, to create a cooling loop like this, you can sort of just create something where you just push air out, or CO2 in this case, uh, through some radiators and pull it back in. That creates constant draft. It's a bit annoying to do, so instead of doing that, we, what we can do is create a radiator system, essentially a heat exchanger. Now. My axe to grind is more that a heat, or a, a, a wall cooler, in this case, it's a, a heat exchanger. I'll just put it down. It only has one exit. And that's really, really weird. Think of the, the, the central heating system in your house, or a water cooling loop in your PC, or something like that. In order to pass a pipe through out of this and into some radiators, you need, you need circulation. And if we've got one pipe, you don't have circulation, what you have is a tank. <laughs> Unless this is a loop passing through a pump, there is no circulation going on. So, in one in one sort of respect, it's nice that it's simple to do this. In another, it really annoys me. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully it doesn't annoy too many of you as well, but you get the idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this active vent on this side with this wall cooler. On the outside, we're going to pull that passive vent off in a second. Let me just put this away. Then we can actually pick up some of this stuff. We may as well do it while we're here. No, what do I need to remove you? There we go. So out here, let's, let's already remove this. We don't actually want to put the cooler out here. What we want to do is put the pipe work out here. And we need to remove that passive vent first. There it goes. Um, we don't... I mean, I think I'm going to probably put a door here at some point. So I want to reserve some room for that. And if I do do that, um, this will be interesting where I put these radiators. 
uh, what we could do is send it upwards. That might be an option, and that might be a useful sort of... Well, it depends how, how far away you can see that from, but that, that might be one possibility. Uh, I don't have many radiators on me, though, so uh, this won't be terribly, uh, terribly long for the moment. But let's just put a... Uh, u-bend go back into straight and then we're just going to go up with the straight pipe work and radiators, radiators don't need anything uh, particularly um oh, whoops let me just make sure i get this before my fuel runs out ah, that's really annoying there we go. So it's a very short mast at the moment, <laughs> but that will uh, that will increase over time. And I've only got a couple of radiators. They're actually surprisingly expensive radiators. I think they need steel. I want to. I want to think they need steel. So I'm going to want to change the key for that that uh, jetpack to be the same one as Space Engineers because X is much easier to get to than uh, J or K, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, let's rotate that around. Put one radiator in, put another radiator in, and we've got, essentially... <laughs> I know, I know, it looks weird. And in fact, I'm actually going to need to grab one of those. Yeah, we're going to make a quick change to that. It is J. There we go. Uh, the one change I want to make, and I'll just reduce this sort of height for now, is just to change this to be a T-junction. And why? Well, because we're going to fill this pipe. Because what it doesn't do, or what it isn't going to do, hopefully, <laughs> we'll see in a second, is that this isn't going to be something that, that the interior CO2 gets passed into. And because it's a heat exchanger and not just a, a loop of some kind, um, what's going to happen here is we're going to need some kind of gas in here. And we really need some kind of flow, but this gas already has the internal atmosphere in it because it's got... Yeah... It's got that uh, that vent on it, hasn't it? So we're probably going to need to get rid of that, which is straightforward to do. But uh, yeah, what we actually want, instead of just a mix of gases, and in fact, is that the, that's just a passive vent. Let's go inside and replace the interior while we're at it. What we're actually going to need is uh, something like a, the active vent I'm using for a vacuum pull uh, on the uh, the water system. And we're going to empty it, and then we're going to insert pollutant, or X. Now that, as far as I know, is the best sort of gas you can put in there to take heat away. So let's give that a go, shall we? Let's grab you. There we go. And let's swap you with an active cooler. As you can see, it's it's just under freezing and 28 kPa here. I did get a good suggestion from someone saying, hey, you can use your waste a tank so you can put it out here Waste and open it critical. and it'll let the gases out and it'll equalize with the pressure that's in here so it'll only help up to the point of, of the gases in here but because this is a, a large room and that's just a small tank it doesn't really do all that much but it, it uh, it's fine uh, so there we go pop you in so this is a cooler and um, it, it will already work but we're going to want to empty that pipe before we actually do anything with it let's just cycle to the exterior we actually want the pressure to be, you know, halfway up there. Uh, idea, well, not halfway up, but the same as our suit, 49 or there thereabouts will be pretty cool. Okay, let's head out. Oh, how's the battery doing? Oh, charge high. Let me exchange. I think I just replaced that just before I started recording. So now all we need to do, ooh, that's charging up to three. Good. All we need to do is just pull from that. Ah, that might actually need a fair amount of cabling. Do. Have I left enough on top? Oh, I've got some on top. But because I've just cooked up some copper, we can actually make a fair amount of it. Let me just queue up a lot of cable. Uh, how much copper have we got? Eh, 48. So that'll make two stacks. And I think I've got another set of copper just finishing. Yes, I do. So we can afford to be a little bit lenient with that. This is going to go all over the place. And I don't care. <laughs> uh, I'm going to need lots of cable coil anyway, so... It's not wasted. And that's going to start stacking up like crazy. And the uh, sun's about to go down. Okay, so now, uh, did I get that active vent from inside? I did. So we could use that to empty the system. That's one option. And we can do that off the top or down here somewhere. You know, get the idea like... Uh, 
Uh, remember to connect the correct side to the pipework this time, Gray. There we go, that kind of thing. That would do fine. And then what we're going to want to do from there. Do I have enough uh, pipework? Yeah, let me just connect that again. I'm just going to connect with a T junction. Um, do we actually want to connect with it? We need something to fill, don't we? So we're going to need to hook up a tank connector and then we're going to fill this pipe network with pollutant. And to do that, that's when I have to go onto that system I was talking about here. I have to extend this. I'll do it off camera, but uh, I'm just going to rearrange this and add a few bits and pieces. Then I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, so there's some changes here which are fairly straightforward, but I should, let me just shut down this noisy... There you go. That's much, that's much nicer. Yeah, so I've made some changes here. Um, we've got, yeah, a tank connector on the input here. So this will be whatever, you know, alternative to the furnace, input side. Again, this is connected with a valve, so we can keep it shut off and separate. Same thing here, keep it shut off and separate, but we'll open them, you know, much, much of the time. Um, I wanted to show this just because there's a few different ways of doing this. Now, the problem here is if we put a tank on here, and this is the output, this is the line we want, and we take the tank off, this line is still filled. So we've got to dump it somewhere. So you might think, I can put a volume pump in the way, or a pressure regulator, it doesn't really much matter. So you can put that right there. There's no problem with doing that right next to this tank connector, except on the output side of this, it's still filled with stuff. So the next time you put another tank on there, it'll likely get filled with, you know, the last sort of stuff in here that you wanted. Yeah, that's not great. So um, you have to sacrifice sort of one <laughs> one pipe's worth. I wish I wish you didn't have to. If anyone knows any way of not doing that, feel free to let me know uh, in the comments. Uh, but I'm going to put another one on this side as well. So on the waste side, we might not want to to have that that pipe filled with something. There might be a reason for us to do otherwise. In which case, we'll want to dump that as well, and that means in turn that uh, if we just put in a straight piece and a t-junction there we go then we can just keep this dedicated to uh to evacuating the pipes essentially so let's just uh go over here let's put this away grab our pda turn it on turn the active vent on so nothing in that that is uh, set it outward at the moment, so that should be just fine. On this pipe network, we've got 18 moles of H2O. So as a demonstration, if I undo this, yep, it should be getting rid of essentially <laughs> water into the air. So that pipe network's empty. This pipe network's empty. I can shut off this valve. And similarly, on this side, we've got some CO2, uh, some N2, some O2, and some X. So we can, again, just do that, and we should Got to clean out that pipe. There it goes. That's that one gone as well. So this is a waste system that's relatively straightforward. And then we have two tank connectors that we can use for big tanks to, to haul whatever we actually want here. We've got pure H2O in this tank, 382 moles. Uh, pure O2 in this tank, 2,400. And in fact, now that's 2.4 kilomoles. So yeah, 2,400 moles. That's fine. I thought it was going to. I thought it was going to be two. 2,400 kilomoles. That would have been entirely different. Um, um, mega moles, but uh, yeah, and please look at the XKCD mole of moles. That, that that is worth looking at if you have never seen it before. Uh, so yes, we have the ability to do lots of stuff with this now. In particular, we can just filter in and out whatever we actually need for various systems. And um, what do we need first? So we're going to need a pollutant filter, I think. Let me just see if I can build one. Hopefully, I can uh, filter. Pollutant. There we go. Confirm. And let's build one of you. Takes five iron. And also it takes five iron for these big tank connectors as well. So they, these. It's quite quite economical to actually build them. Uh, so you can haul around large tanks full of stuff instead of like the small canisters I've got back here, which sort of fit in your backpack. We have these much larger things. And there's an even larger tank size, big round tank that we've got to get to here. But they're more uh, permanent things. So if I swap in this out for water, and I can put my filter in here. They don't seem to be consumable, so water and oxygen. Uh, my pollutant is going to go over there to that. So if we get, uh, let's just say, 
We want another portable tank, don't we? Portable tank, how much do you cost? 20 iron. That's quite a lot, but as long as you don't burst the tanks, uh, I guess that will be palatable. That's going to take a little while. Let me just change that so it doesn't uh, build another one. And I think the other thing I'm going to do is just build another uh, large battery, I think. Well, when I say large, I mean the, the battery cell large rather than the, uh, the big static emplacement. And that's going to take gold, copper and steel. Let's grab you, put you over here. Do I have any red paint? Uh, that would be useful if we did. Um, spray paint red, yes we do. So pollutant would appear to be red according to the filters. So I'll just go with the same colour as the filters. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And I'll put my paint cans back in here. Then we can just grab you. And you're going to go onto here. Like that. It's not as easy to place these as it is the small canisters. But uh, it's, it's not too bad. We can just turn that off for now. We've closed the vents, so that is all going to work. There we go. And now what I want to do is just grab our tank from the back here. It's got lots of stuff in it. And that... Oh, when I managed to grab it without uh, throwing myself all over the place. If we put that on our input, we'll be able to... Uh, just connect you back up. Uh, one right there. No, no, <laughs> come back again. This is the downside to these tanks. Uh, once we have a large building to do this, of course, this will be much, much easier. But uh, uh, early days, early days. So let me just double check. Is that what I think it is? Um, yes. So there is some X in there, 160 odd moles. It is actually going into this tank, uh, this pipe network. So we can take a look. So you can see there's lots of water in there. We want to get the X out of that, basically the pollutant. So uh, we're going to unlock. Well, do I want it to go backwards into the furnace? It shouldn't matter because it should all get, should, you should all get drawn into this air conditioning unit. So we will turn them on and I'll turn the volume pump. In fact, I don't even need the volume pump, but it just saves me a couple of spaces. Uh, so let's just turn that on. Let's see if this is working. You see, still got some, still got some H2O in there. And I suspect that's just because it's stuck in this, this connector. So not much I can do about that just yet, I don't think. Uh, I'd rather it not do that. I may have to put it through the system again. See, if we can take that tank off, and then there should only be X in this, I think. No, uh, there's a tiny, tiny amount of H2O here, but we should be able to bleed most of it off if I put it through again, but I'll do that off camera, of course. So now we've got X building up and we can get that to this pipe over here. Whoops, pipe over here, put in a tank connector and fill her up, or at least mostly fill her up. Um, what we can do is if we wanted to do, just rob that volume pump and use it to pressurize, every remove everything from the tank that it can and put it into that pipe. So let me get that going once this is finished. Have you finished? You're still counting up the number of moles there. Um, what, what are we like on this side? 3.4 MPA. I don't want that to go over 10. Uh, what are you on this side? You are, uh, because this, this pipe will burst if it gets too high. So what we may be able to do uh, what are you on? You're dropping quite substantially. Let me just drop that for a second. Yep. And what are you at? Okay, so we could disconnect this and put it here and everything else would get dragged through, or at least most of it would get dragged through. Uh, ideally, I'd like this to empty first of all, however, so uh, I may need more tanks to work with, but let me just keep an eye on, make sure it doesn't go near 10. And then we, we should be okay. So let's have a look. Are you empty yet? World Pipe Network, are you empty? You're nearly empty. I can another 60. Okay, let me wait for that to finish and then we'll come back just after I recycle this a couple of times. Okay, and there we've got it filling. It's got a tiny amount of H2O left in it. Again, even with this setup, um, I still end up with a tiny amount. Uh, so I guess we could just run that active vent for longer if we really wanted to get rid of it, but uh, we shouldn't have too much of an issue 
all that's gone now. It's gone from this side, so we can close off these valves again if we wanted to. And now on this side, it's pressurized. It's 44 moles of pollutant. I've got 172 moles in this tank. Okay, so that will do. Let me just grab my tools. Disconnect you. And then, first of all, what we're going to do is come over here and make sure we vent. Remember to vent this section. So we've got miscellaneous stuff in here. We want to turn it on. And now it's all gone. Yep, that's world, not pipe network. Pipe network. Let's just have a look out here. Yep, that's all gotten rid of. And uh, I'm just going to extend that upwards whenever we need to, which is why I've got this U-bend here. And we've got a tank connected to, to, to basically fill it with stuff. Okay. And what we're going to fill it with is that pollutant. Okay. So let's just turn that off for a second. Put you on my backpack and then go and fetch ourselves a large can of pollutant. Of which I'm going to need my tools again. Now, I don't want to waste all of this, so, well, it is waste, I guess, by definition, but uh, did I just attach that? I did just attach that, wow. <laughs> We're going to come over here, and it'll be fine. Let's just use the jet pack to get it up onto the roof. And, of course, I've still got 44 moles in that tank back there, so I've got to get rid of that somehow. But uh, we'll worry about that another day. And that should mean this now will have a little tiny bit of H2O and a pollutant. And it's pressurized. And it's minus 10. So let's just have a look, shall we? How much battery power do I have in my main battery? I would say array, but it's only one. Uh, four bars. Let's go and turn this on. Let's see this, if this actually will sort of decrease the temperature in our room. Let's cancel the pressurization. And in here we're at 6 degrees. Now remember when I showed you this previously in this recording, I've done nothing. No heating in here whatsoever. This is just the passage of the sun over the top. So uh, we are going to want to turn this on. And you can see that's quickly dropping the temperature. Okay, now that might have sort of, you know, decreasing, um, what might, what's the what's the term for that? Um, yeah, that's going to annoy me, my, my brain's gone blank. But yeah, uh, decreasing effects over time, essentially. It might not be able to be as efficient the lower the temperature it gets, but uh, we should be able to, to deal with that, I think. We've got a t gas temperature sensor here, so this is pressure. Uh, I wonder, can we set this to temperature? Interesting. Um, I think, I don't think you can actually just do it by... Oh, you don't have enough charge. Okay, fine. I'm going to get some more charge. But we've got a decent atmosphere inside here anyway. Let's just take a quick look. It is still the same. Yeah, there is some X in here, still some N2 in here, but mostly CO2, which is what we want. And, of course, we will want uh, more O2 as we get further forward. So we've now got a cooling system. What I just want to do is set some kind of limits for it. Uh, how long do we have left in the episode? We've got 18... 22 minutes. I guess we can see if we can sort out some kind of a detection system to turn that cooling system on and get rid of some of the heat. Um, to do that, we're going to require, well, a few bits and pieces from the electric side of things so let's just turn on my light for a second and get everything out of here there we go we're going to want copper more than anything else and then in here we're going to select uh, i actually do want that battery uh, gold and steel steel gold i will have to make more steel i'm i'm fully out but i want the battery so large because in my backpack which you may have seen i've got one of these there we go. Portable light. And these are great, uh, but they do need battery power. And I don't have a spur large battery. I keep using the one in this uh, char this suit and swapping with that one. So I always want one full just in case. Oh, better turn that off before it makes another one. Uh, there we go. So we can pop that in. Take this in here, and then we should have a battery cell. There we go. 
And will you go in my backpack and hopefully I can turn off my lights here now. My soup shouldn't lose and I should have a much nicer light to walk around with. Really a nice tip. Oh, did I? Oh, well, I guess I've got two large, got two large ones there. <laughs> I really must be out of steel now. Okay, so we're going to want some bits of logic. Not terribly much, that much is for certain, so pop down here. We want some I.O. and I'm going to make probably a couple of those. Uh, we're going to want to read temperature and detect if something is under or over a certain value. So we're going to want more memory and a math processor, so I'll get a couple of those built. And then what else are we actually going to need? Um, are we going to need anything else? No doubt, but uh, that will do for now. So if I just, uh, that's two IO, isn't it? Yep. Let's go for one logic memory. It's gold and copper for these. And probably worthwhile making a couple of logic processors. It's one of those things that you always need more of those than you, you think you do. So let's just pop those in my backpack. And uh, we have some red cable at the moment. I will just use the red cable and I'll replace it with blue between the episodes. If I can keep the data network separate, that will be very handy indeed. How much do I have? About 20. Let's just swap it with this 50 stack. I don't think I'm going to need anywhere near 50, but uh, just nice to have some on hand. I think that's everything we need. Yeah. Let's go and see if we can hook everything up. Um, and... Just for simplicity's sake, when I'm setting things up, I'm just going to take this power control with me just to separate the networks out. And that will do the job. Let's pop in here. Cycle to interior. Cancel the pressurization. It'd be nice if I could open my helmet in here, but I can't. So <laughs> I will be fine in a pressurized atmosphere, but not necessarily a nicely, uh, a nicely breathable one. Anyway, um, I'm not sure how well uh, CO2 toxicity is modelled in the game. That, that would be a very bad way to go. <laughs> At least nearby if I respawn here anyway. So gas sensor pressure, uh, what we actually want to do is first of all just read that. I want to see, uh, first of all, if we can just get temperature out of it. Um, yeah. And more importantly, if we can do that, uh, I guess... I guess I want this. Yeah, I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to rotate it like that, I think. And I'm going to I'm going to remove this. Let's just grab you. Oh, you know when you <laughs> when you forget to do something and you're actually recording, it, it, it's just so so annoying. <laughs> I knew there's something I went out here for. Yep, I need the, uh, the replacement battery. Let's just pop you away. We're not going to need you for a while. And let's just get the uh, the battery out of here. Swap you over. I set you up for recharging. Uh, that's going to cause some issues. So I'm just going to turn off this charger while we're while we're working. I'll turn it back on again once it comes light. There we go. Cycle and cancel. And let's just make sure that's in there. Good. Now we should have everything we need. Let's deconstruct you. Good. And we're just going to drop you on the floor for a second. Then I'm just looking at where the data comes in and where we can get everything else from. So if I have a logic reader here like this and just drop it down, we should just be able to put a gas sensor and flip it around like that, which means that I can easily have a bit of blue cable right there. And that won't be a problem. There we go. So this should be able to read that. So let's turn it on and get my screwdriver. So I'll change the gas sensor. And we want pressure, temperature. What are you reading? Are we not out of power? Oh, that's not the power connector. Power connector is there. That's why. <laughs> yeah, we just need a little bit more. I'm like, Huh, what? Why doesn't that work? Yes, because Gray, you haven't actually connected it up right yet. <laughs> That's generally why they don't work. There we go. And junction, I think. Uh, 
And for now, I know that's going to irritate people. Oh, let me just do corner instead. All right, so you're on and you're reading 278. That's what I was just going to check. I was almost sure the units were in Kelvin and they are. Uh, so 273.15 Kelvin is zero degrees C. If you're American, that is some high number that is nonsensical and doesn't actually make sense. So freezing point of water, zero or 273.15. So if we want something that starts cooling the room around 30 degrees, then we just want 303. 0.15. In this case, however, for testing, what we actually probably want to do is to set it something like the current temperature to try and keep it to freezing or something like that. So if it's higher than 273, turn on this. So let's just take a quick look. And yes, for those people who think Fahrenheit is good, I'm so sorry. I just had to troll you somehow this episode. <laughs> okay, so we want a... Uh, that That's uh, fine. We want a processor. In fact, I'm running out of time. Let me just set up a few things on the wall and come back to explain it. OK, and here we go. So it should be straightforward. We're reading the temperature and I've put in a logic memory unit here. I've showed those before set to 273. And what we're all going to do is going to say, hey, if uh, let's just um, take a look at you input one, we're going to take a look at logic reader. So logic reader is less than um, actually no greater than. Yeah, logic reader is greater than logic memory. Remember, oh, ooh, actually, that's a good point. We need to make sure that it's not looking at that. Or well, maybe it shouldn't be able to see those other logic memory. We may need a rename or just to double check that this is going to work. But uh, let's just turn this on. So are you greater than this? So if I go to here and say increase this now to, I don't know, um, 297. No, you're not greater. So it is looking at the right things. Let's bring that down again. So 273. OK, so this is going to output 0 or 1. And then all we're going to do with here is just literally look for this. Uh, we're going to let's just turn it off for a second. We're going to look the input for the logic compare and we're going to output to the wall cooler. Uh, not the wall heater, the wall cooler. That, uh, you may have to go through a few things. I would like a drop down list here. Please, devs, if you're watching, drop down list just like your uh, your your tool machines. It'll be very very useful. Uh, wall cooler. There we go. And we're going to set that to the uh, set on state. Yeah, the on state. Okay. So if I turn you on, it's going to start cooling the room if it's over you know a certain amount. So right now it's going to cool the room back down to freezing. Not necessarily what we want. So let's set this correctly. Uh, we're going to want this about 25, 25 degrees, let's say. So 25 onto this uh, is 298. So let's set this to 298. There we go. And that should keep us at a relatively comfortable temperature, even with the sun going across the top. Now, it depends on just how good this is. Uh, right now, it's not going to do anything, of course, because I've just changed its setting. But uh, that will turn on. The real question is, once it's up to something like that temperature, will it be able to cool the entire room? That's uh, that's the question. And of course, all of this takes electricity, so we want to make sure we have enough electricity to start all of this going. But with that said, we have pressurized space. It's a reasonable temperature. Uh, we could try heating it up with this. This does take an awful lot of battery power, however, though. So as soon as I turn this on, I tend to just run that thing out of batteries entirely. But uh, we can get this to that sort of temperature, or what we can also do is just bring the pressure up. Uh, yeah, bring the pressure up, and that will in turn increase the heat in here, and the sun will continue to warm it, hopefully until it gets to the point where this is a livable space. And that should be our hydroponics, when I say livable space, I actually mean uh, sort of growable space. <laughs> I can't live in here. Um, that should be our hydroponics bay complete, as long as each of these are capable of doing their jobs. If they're not, we can easily put in another wall cooler, because we have a pipe network. As long as it's not the pipe network that, and the radiators that are limiting it, we can put in extra wall coolers. Or we can put in more radiators, and that should give this the, the ability, if we just have a look at uh, this for a second, 
we can see just what temperature that's at. That's at minus 19. So that should be pretty good as long as that doesn't rise substantially. So yeah, we've got a good system there. On this side, we've got a pressurization system and we've got a heating system in case we need it, but the plant should be able to do this far, far more effectively than this heat heater can. And all I need to do is go outside, grab a plant and put it in here. And I'm gonna start doing that between the episodes. I'll play around with it a little bit more and then we'll start looking at how much heat, because apparently uh, I think plants add heat to this room as well, just what will overpower this room. Uh, I had some good suggestions saying, uh, oh, a two by two is a large enough room. Yes, it, it very well may be. But I want the flexibility in here um, just to be able to wall this off. And we'll see, you know, because if I need to uh, cut off some of this area, all I need to do is cut off those entire eight blocks and that immediately makes this room a lot smaller. Or cut off these six blocks and have a small passageway running around the outside but we really do want some kind of uh, path for the sun so if i did have to cut off anything i would probably put all the plants along this wall like this and it's got a path through the sun so that's a one by five and then you know i put a door in here or an interior airlock had some other good suggestions about how to stop the airlock from pressurizing the room or more importantly polluting the room and that is to just have another airlock beyond this one so have a vacuum space in between the two very good idea probably will do that one at some point and uh, what I haven't done is sort of a filtration system for this room that's gonna be relatively straightforward uh, it's just gonna be another setup like we've got outside but just with a some more bits and pieces uh, basically we'll probably want to have the air, con the air conditioning unit leading through uh, everything well we could do it two ways uh, one way of doing it is have two units have one with an oxygen and a, a co2 filter everything else goes to waste so that will be used once and hopefully then the room will never get polluted again uh, then you can swap out the filters with just uh, co2 and co2 comes back into the room and then oxygen goes out the waste pipe when oxygen goes out the waste pipe then effectively you've got um, a system to filter off oxygen for tanks and um, the room should remain co2 as long as the plants don't need a little bit of oxygen as well then we'll be okay but we'll try that next episode. We'll probably have, you know, a better sort of uh, oxygen refill episode next time. And I hope you fully liked it. So we've got some stuff done this episode. Better sort of system over there, at least before we start building a huge building to do it. We've got a cooling system, which should work rather well. Hopefully you guys like it. And um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. So we'll see you next time as always. Feel free to like, subscribe, share if you haven't already. And um, leave comments below. As always, guys, thanks for watching.